Hey guys and welcome to another Unreal Into tutorial. This time I'm going to show how I created the L system in Unreal Engine. And for those of you who don't know what the L system is about, you can navigate to this uh, Wikipedia page explaining quite detailed what the L system is about. So up here it says the L system or Lindenmeyer system is a parallel rewriting system and a type of formal grammar. And you can read more about it yourself um, and see some examples of what it can create. So we're going to take a look at how we can create something similar. We're not going to create everything in here because that's kind of out of the scope of, of this video. Uh, oh, so we're also going to take a look at one of these examples to begin with because I think this example shows pretty good what this is about. So to begin with, you will need something called an axiom or uh, an initiator. And what all this stuff here really means is that it's just working by a, a kind of a, an initiator and then a set of rules. So you have two rules here saying A becomes AB and B becomes A, which produces in generation zero, which is the initial state, just an A. So the rule A says that this is going to become AB. So as we can see from here, it becomes AB. And then you're going to have a string, which now is consisting of A and B. So it replaces the A with AB. And then it's going to pass to the next generation and say A becomes AB again, and B is becoming an A. And then in the third generation, A is become AB, and B becomes A, A becomes AB, and so on and so forth. So that's basically what all this stuff means. So I hope this demystifies this a little bit. And you can read, continue down here and read some more and see some more examples of what it can generate for us. I think I mentioned this in, in one of the early videos, so can also go check that out. So I'm going to do this all the way from the beginning because it's fairly simple to, to make this. Um, so let's see. I have a blank project here. Called, I call this just simple tree because I'm eventually going to create something different than L system. I can already tell. And it popped up here. So the way I'm going to do this is to, in this video, I'm not going to render anything. I'm just going to generate the string representations, and then we can talk about how we can convert that into something visual. So I want to keep this inside a blueprint. And for this, I'm just going to pick an actor. So I'm going to call this just an L system tree. Okay, so we wanna we wanna go to the event graph. Actually, what we wanna do is uh, to construct everything in the construction script, but that's uh, just kind of a, a detail. But and let's see, we're gonna call something from the construction script. So to begin with, let's just get rid of that, and let's just I'm gonna show how I, I built this because I frankly think this is a pretty good way to do it. So anyway, we need a few variables. One of them, since we're going to be working with strings, so one of them is going to be the initiator, I'm going to call it. And the type of this is going to be string. And let me just check something here. Yeah, well, I'm going to go with strings. Because anyway, we're not going to keep on using this. So we know for a fact that we're going to have a set of rules. Rules. So I'm going to create two rules for this example. You can create more rules if you feel like it. And in order to keep the same naming as I did in my first video, you can see in this example here, they use to begin with A and B. And then the example I started to work out for, from was this one actually 
but instead of x i used g as they do up here i don't know why i ended up with that but f and g so we're gonna have two rules here f rule and a g rule so we're gonna want to expose actually all of them so it's easy to manipulate once you place your instance in in the world that means you're going to have access to them here so that also means that you can create several instances of, of these and have different uh, generate uh, trees generated so let's set some initial or default values for this so i'm gonna use uh, i think for this example we're gonna use this example down here and just convert it to the same so the start simple is going to be x or g in this case and that's what i set it to and the f rule there we go says it should become this so i'm going to copy this and paste it into here Oops. Just replaced X with a G. And then the G roll says it's going to turn into two. Let's see. This was actually the G roll. Sorry about that. So the F becomes FF. Let's copy this and the G becomes all this mess here so you might be wondering what the plus and the square bracket and all that stuff is but basically it's the minus and the plus uh, rotations and the brackets starting bracket means create a branch and the end one means go back uh, to that to the original branch so in terms of the ev evolution of this it's not really doing anything so that's uh, just to mention that and then we also need a variable to hold the number of generations we want to generate so let's call this generations and make this an integer and zero is fine for now <clears throat> okay so we're about ready to begin generating this so i'm gonna start off by s taking this initiator and also one thing since we are working with strings here we want to hold a copy of the string in some variables so i actually forgot one one or two variables we need so we want a current And let's call this the next one, the next current, or the next. That's going to be fine. So to begin with, we want to set the current to be equal to the initiator. And let's make a function for this, actually. Let's put it a little bit away. So let's make one called... Evolve L system and actually what we want to do is to set this outside the function itself so because we need to call this several times really so we need to call this a number of times so let's see what will we do we need this generations here and we need a for each four and then for each generation we want to call this evolve function and that means that we're gonna start off this loop here by initiating it so let's call this 
because we could also put this inside a function. Let's do that. Call this Okay, so from here on we can call this generate our system, which then in turn calls the evolve a number of times. So let's go back here and see if we need this. I don't think so. So here we go. Um, the current I'm, the, I'm not going to be spending too much time making this really nice. I'm just going to quickly illustrate how this works. So it's basically just a matter of taking this current string and then we'll convert this to a, an array. Character array from string. And we can make a local variable for this. Local. And whatever, and, and this is actually going to be a, an array of string strings. Oops. So I'm storing this in a local variable in order not to have to call this every time. I'm not really sure what it means if it's going to generate it all the way. Uh, from the beginning all the time or how it works so anyway let's make a for loop here so um, we need to get the length of this and this is going to give us the, the length of this uh, array here but we only need to loop from zero to minus one so let's go here and like this out. Okay. So in order to get the character at this index position, we'll use this local current array and then just get and this, which is going to return this character here. And from here on, what we want to do is set up a switch. And we don't need the default really, so I'm going to add a pin for each of these. And let's compile. Oh, oh up here. So once you have the, this selected, we say case 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so you just need to go up here and, and rename them. So I'm going to call this F and G and plus minus we need one more and scrap bracket begin and scrap bracket end so i guess that's it yes okay so for the f let me just think here What we need to do is to take, for the F, we need to take the F roll and we need to append this to a new current. The new current is, oops, let me just turn that off. The new current is gonna be the new um, generation that we are generating so this is a variable that we need to clear actually uh, at the beginning of each generation so let's see hmm.
let's see, we could do it here. So let's say next. Oh, the current. Oh, I cleared that outside, didn't I? Cleared it. I set it here. Okay, no mind. We're going to return to this in a moment. So anyway, if I meet the F, then I want to set the next to whatever is in, let's say here, uh, whoops, next, sorry, the next plus the F rule. And I need to switch this around. I can see, let's see. I have the next and I want to append this afterwards. Is that correct? I think it is correct. And that's what I want to do when I meet the F. And similarly for the G rule. Just need to switch this one out. And for all of the other symbols, all it needs to do is just to take whatever character came in and append. So basically just carry that symbol over here. So whoops. Wrong one. And then we want to set this. So we want to connect all these up. There we go. So, yeah. I guess this could be laid out a little bit better. But I hope it is clear what is going on here. Okay, so once we are done with this uh, loop, we want to actually take what we now have generated inside the next generation and put this into the current generation. So I want to set the current equal to the next. Like this. And then we want to set clear the next. So we can clear the next here. That's Good way of doing it, I guess. So that's what we do when, once we are done here. So we can actually at this point test this. Let's just save this. And did I call this? So I can make a print string here. And I want to print out the current because that's going to hold whatever generated. So let's see. If I set the number of generations to, let's say, one, we just get a G for some reason. Uh, why do I need to get a G? Let's set this to two. Mm -hmm. The initiator is G, this is F, this is FG something. I'm missing something here, ain't I? I should also actually reset the next here, by the way, to a blank. All right, so it calls this, oh, there we go. <laughs> so a number of generations, let's say one to this number here. So let's see what it prints now. So now it should go from one to two. I don't get anything. Sh 
strange. I do get something, but I'm not getting this point. Oh, I only have it in the, in the construction script. Okay, hang on. Um, So here I called the first time. And then it doesn't show up anymore. Hit break point on. We just move this print here to the this let's print it at the end of this generate L system. Okay, so I hit it two times. And then hopefully we should have something in the log. We have all this stuff here generated in the log. Okay. So something works. I'm not really sure why I didn't see it at the bottom last time. Let me just check something. It's kind of interesting. So if I compile this. Okay, I do get it, but yeah. All right. And in order to verify that everything works as it should, we could just take this and simplify it very quite a lot. So say the initiator is going to create a G or start with a G and the G is going to create an FG which again is going to create a FF and a FG so I guess this is correct let me just check this out So let's see, we have uh, to begin with a G and that becomes uh, F G and the F becomes F F. So if I start off with uh, zero, then we have a G and that becomes an F G and second run becomes f f from up here and the g becomes fg so we have we should have this string in in the log i believe we did didn't we f f f g so everything works as it should so i guess uh that concludes what i had for this video sorry about the mess as you may have noticed, I don't already always prepare everything from the beginning, but uh, I, yeah, sometimes it also allows you to see how I debug things, which sometimes is helpful. So in the next video, we're going to take a look at how we can render something out of this. So stay tuned and thank you for watching. Bye bye.